What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Hawk Talk on Melrose YouTube page, where we are going to talk some Hawks. But before we do that, make sure you subscribe, like the video, and share with your friends. That is all we ask, and let's roll. All right, here we go. This is Hawk Talk on Melrose recapping Iowa's disappointing defeat, 35-7 to yesterday. We're recording this on Sunday. Expected in a way. Obviously, Tyler and I's hope was we would play decently competitive and we did in the first half but everything came crashing down in the second half and we are here to talk a little bit about that today but before we get into that because for me as i sit here on this sunday we are now seven games against ranked teams since penn state game of 2021 yeah. where it has become this story just complete embarrassment and once again, yesterday, the first half was at least decent. We went into halftime. That's great. But the second half, it was it was over. Um, and for me, I love Kirk, but I really feel like we have become a program that is in a way mediocre and stale. And, and I, I know people are probably not going to agree with me on the mediocre part because we've won a lot of games right in the last few years. And it's been good. I'm not saying that. I'm not taking it for granted. But it just feels like when we are so close of taking that next step, it seems like we're stuck in the mud. And it really comes down to Kirk's just unwillingness. And it really feels like the game has kind of passed him by. Like what worked those first 20 years of being like the bullies of the Big Ten, the physical, number one, that's kind of went away. But number two, it's just the game has passed you by. And... 127 to 7 has been the last four games against ranked teams. Think about that. We have put up yeah. seven points in four games. Something needs to change. Kirk needs to address this because it is becoming, once again, routine. And it needs to stop, frankly. Like, if we want to be a program that competes at the highest level, you can't keep letting this happen. Yeah, and and that's kind of a, a good way to start it, Colin. A kind of a, a big picture takeaway from from watching the game. I I I feel the the same sort of way about it. I mean, it just seems like every damn time we play a big time opponent lately, it's just non competitive. You read the numbers up, one hundred twenty seven to seven in these games. I mean, that is no matter what way you look at it, inexcusable. It's how we're losing is the real issue, right? It's not just that we're losing. It's how we are losing. I think there needs to be a little bit of a philosophy change from Kirk. You know, he needs to be more aggressive. What We were aggressive. We fake punted it, got it, but he called the timeout. And then not only did that, you know, overturn the fact that we got it, then he settles for the punt yeah. we're in plus territory. We're on that side of the field in a game which we have – zero to lose that's that philosophy that is is playing not to lose and i'm just really really tired of it but I, i'm glad you also brought up like the punt thing playing not to lose i mean we are playing at ohio state clearly a much better and talented team a team that is 18 point favorites probably gonna make it to the final four of the college football playoff, if not the national championship, if not maybe even college football champions. Why are we not being aggressive in those situations? You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Instead, we play the punt game and you're not going to beat Ohio State playing the punt game. You're just not going right. to, especially when it's fourth and inches. And if you don't feel confident with Cade, then bring in Brendan Sullivan on that fourth down. All you have to do is a QB sneak up fourth and inches. If you don't get it, you don't get it. You move on. We probably weren't going to win anyways. But no, we play the punt game. It's things like that that just annoy me. And really, the offense to me, like, and I keep saying this, like, it has improved, right? Like, we we are seeing a little bit better. We're just not yep. quite there yet. Like, right? We haven't taken that next level yet because. Like unlike last year, those three ranked games, Michigan, uh, Tennessee, and Penn State, like the offense was dreadful. Like we couldn't even convert first downs. We couldn't do anything. Right. At least this game, we were getting some first downs. We were sustaining some drives. You know, we didn't do bad. I mean, it wasn't good, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't like yeah. it was horrible. 
But to get to that next level, that's where we need to get to now. And for me, like, how do you get to that next level? And it, and it really, frankly, is just better quarterback play. And this has plagued Iowa for the last how many years? And this is another thing going back to like Kirk Ferentz unwilling to change. Like we are a quarterback away with our defense. We are a quarterback away from being really good and being able to, to compete against a lot of teams. If you have a quarterback that can do that can make plays out of nothing, that can run a little bit, that yeah. can throw 35 yards and not underthrow their quarterback or their re- wide receiver, that is what we need. And to me, yesterday, once again, Cade played okay in the first half. I still think that throw to Caden Weijin kind of, in a way, overmatched everything that we saw in the first half because you have to connect on that. Caden Weijin is wide yeah. open. You have yeah. to connect. You're a fifth year senior, for God's sake. And then at the end of the game, they ask Kirk Ferentz about Cade, and he says he's improving. Okay, if he was a freshman and a sophomore, I'm okay with that answer, but he's a fifth year senior. Yep. We don't have time to improve at this point. This is a honestly a playoff caliber roster, especially on the defensive side. And we're wasting it away again because of the quarterback play. Cade McNamara now has zero touchdowns in an Iowa uniform against power four defenses. Think about that. And then in the second half, three turnovers. Bam, 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 all literally in a row. Yet, the guy that comes in at the end of the game who can at least run, apparently, he, like that's just not an option at this point. Like, nope, yeah. Kate is the guy. What are we doing here? Yeah. Um, like, the, the, the comment about Kate improving really just pisses me off, if I'm being completely honest. Like you said, you you, you don't have time to, to wait for your quarterback five weeks into the season to start keep improving, you know, and again, I'm not saying we were supposed to win the game or I thought at any point I was, we were going to win the game, but you're exactly right. The stats are the stats. A QB is not improving. If he's not throwing a touchdown against any power four, power five opponent, since he's been in an Iowa uniform dating back to last year, it's frustrating. And, and it's, I mean, like you said, again, it's the second team, Ohio state defense, really good defense still, by the way. And it's no surprise Sullivan leads a touchdown drive and has a 30 some yard run to, to, you know, during that drive. Yeah. I, I, I really am concerned about it. My, my thing is, and like, I just think this, like Kirk and, and this quarterbacks, quarterback issue at Iowa is, it, it's, it, it's intertwined. One leads to the other. I think Kirk's philosophy of being ultra conservative breeds no confidence for any quarterback at Iowa. That's my personal opinion. But for a long ass time, since maybe CJ Beathard, I just have not seen a confident quarterback in an Iowa uniform right now. And I just wonder if that has something to do with it. His lack of aggression, giving, you know, being maybe a reason why Cade looks like he has zero confidence out there. Like the first half, yeah, he didn't turn it over, but there was nothing that wowed you. He he did just enough to be as mediocre as possible. I think he had like 70 yards in the first half, right? Yeah. He didn't turn it over, which is why it was competitive because our defense was forcing turnovers. And then he pressed a little bit in the second half and they got after him and his color showed a little bit in that second half. I just wonder, is 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 Kirk's lack of aggression part of it? And then also Kate is just not Kate is just not no. the guy that we we were hoping for as well. I just think, and I and I keep saying this for the last how many weeks, and even before the season, you know, when we were hearing reports of Cade still struggling, I, I just, I really think Sullivan is the better option at this point. Number one, he's going to be our quarterback in 2025. Okay. At this point, I don't want to say the season's over yet. You know, we can still have a great year and still be, you know, in the mix at the end of the year. I'm not saying it's over, but you know, at, at the same time, though, we got to start gearing up for like what's to come. And like Sullivan's going to be our starter next year. Clearly, Cade McNamara is just not it. And they were showing highlights of the Michigan Ohio State game from 2021. They were showing some throws that Cade made. That is not the same Cade McNamara. And, and a lot of it has to do with injuries, unfortunately, right? The injuries, everything that was in play because of that, it's just not the same Cade. And no. We're now five games in, and it's just still looks the same. It, and I don't know what 
like Kirk has with Cade, like the because it's just like it's not yeah. even an option at this point. Like, nope, he's no. a guy. And it's like, what has Cade done besides yep. make a lot of money in the NIL? What has he done to deserve like an automatic quarterback starting job? Like, it's not even a question. Like, that shouldn't be the case. And with Brendan, I'm not saying he's light years better than Cade. They're honestly probably pretty close. But the one thing Sullivan has is his running ability. And I'm telling you, this yeah. offense would be so much better if we had a quarterback that can run the football. The last how many years, the offense would be so much better. But when you have a statue quarterback, and yeah. Cade's not really a statue quarterback, but he can't. I mean, there's zero threat running ability. So you don't yeah. have to game plan against that. When you have a quarterback that can run the football, you have it's a little bit more game planning, right? It's a little bit more yeah. like, okay, we got to keep an eye on him. And that opens up everything else. That opens up Caleb Johnson's ability because now the now that DNs have to contain Brennan Sullivan because of that threat to run. RPOs are a little bit easier, a little bit better. Like everything just works better when you have a quarterback that can run the football. And Brennan Sullivan can. Not saying he's way better than than Cade, yeah. but just that ability alone should should literally be the case of why he should be the starter. Not only that, but let's face it, and I think a lot of this has to do with maybe the injuries. Cade just can't throw the ball downfield. And we saw that that throw to Caden Weijin. He underthrew a 35-yard pass. Now, I get it. He was kind of rolling out. But even that, though, you should have the strength to throw that ball. He underthrew him. And now we have seen like so many underthrows by Cade this year. So that's why just those two reasons alone, I think you should give Sullivan a try. You could argue Sullivan's really outplayed him in the limited snaps that he's been on the field. We score when Brendan Sullivan's in the game, whether it's I know it's within maybe five, five, ten yards, but even that 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 drive you led at the end of the game, we scored a touchdown finally against a power or yeah, a power five team, or not even that, just a ranked opponent. Um and, and so with that, it's like the fact that it's not even a, a, a shouldn't even be a question, you know. It's it's why are you asking me if no, Cade's the starter. It's like it's just so dumb and and I don't know. Like I said, for me to be satisfied coming out of this game, the one thing I wanted to see was was a passing touchdown, obviously from Cade McNamara since he's the starter. And we didn't see that. He he just, like you said, he missed the opportunities that were there. Some of the the big, bigger plays down the field, especially early on when you could have maybe jumped out to an early three to or seven to zero lead and, and kind yeah. of shocked them a little bit and maybe put them on their heels. But instead... We missed that opportunity. And yeah, he was efficient in the first half, but nothing vertically down the field. I texted you, how many times were we just passing horizontally? It's, it's, he had like nine or 10 completions and he it was at like 60 yards. And I'm like, dude, there's just zero threat down the field. And Ohio State just played man to man and blitzed the hell out of Caleb Johnson. And he had no chance the yeah. entire game. And, you know, that's what most teams are doing. It's just, this is Ohio State. This is, Four to five stars littered everywhere. They're they're gonna be able to to play the run really well, mm -hmm. and they did that. Um, but if you have, just, but if but if you have Sullivan out there, exactly. you can start doing read options. You can start doing stuff like that where the defense has to change up a little bit. And I can argue he would have completed that ball that that Cade missed to Weijin because his athletic ability throwing on the run is something that he can actually do. I yeah, Cade can't do that. So I. I don't know. And, As a fan and, and watching this game, I I just come out of it going like, man, every time now we play these teams, at least for the foreseeable future, I just feel like we're we're going to yeah. be un not competitive at all. And for reference, I don't want to blame because it, maybe it's coming off that we're we're blaming this entire game on Cade, and that's not the case. Like, there's obviously other reasons: wide receivers not getting yeah. open, right? Um, Ohio State secondary just man-to-man, strength-on-strength strength against our wide receivers. They couldn't do anything. So it's hard. I get that. I understand that offense line really didn't play that well, especially in the run game. Um, it seemed like holes were not opening and things like that. But what what we are trying to get at, and I think I think you agree with me, is Cade is one of the is one of the reasons why. And I'm not saying we would have we would not have won if Brennan Sullivan no. would have started, but I I just think that the offense flows a little better. Yes. Yep, right? exactly. Just, we still just, lose. Like, don't get me wrong. Yes. We still lose that game. He provides something 
that no other QB on the Iowa roster can do. And that's just, it's, it's his ability to run. It's his ability to extend plays. It's his ability to create with his legs and then have that threat and, and maybe not as much pressure on Caleb Johnson like there was on Saturday. So at the end of the first half, we were only down seven to zero, but we were talking on the phone. I, I just didn't feel confident because we're only down seven to zero, but we didn't take advantage of opportunities, the things that happened in the first half, you know, seriously thinking about it, Ohio state had two turnovers plus a turnovers on down. So they essentially had like three turnovers in the first half, zero yeah. points. Not only, not only that, but we had three drives that got to the Ohio state 33, the 50 yard line in the Ohio state 49. Zero points. Like you just can't let that happen. So if you had told me before the game, we're only down seven zero at half, I would have been like, oh my God, thank God. But then if you told me those things, like, okay, well, Ohio State had like three turnovers or two turnovers yeah. and a turnover and downs, and then three drives where we get beyond the or right at the 50 or beyond and we got zero points, I'd be like, oh, I, I would be like, oh my gosh, here we go right. again. Right. And then we just knew like second half, and, and I told you this at half, like I was so deeply afraid of this that. It was gonna not look pretty because we we had every opportunity. We coughed it up. Yep. Now they're gonna take advantage of the second half. And really, and you look at this chart on the screen if you're watching this on YouTube, it really came down to Cade's turnovers. Fumble, interception, fumble, all in a row after the half. And they those resulted in all three touchdowns for Ohio State. And those points. three touchdowns. Besides the first drive, and, I, and once again, I will give them the first drive of the game to start the first half and the second half, right? Those are 14 points right there. But then there are other 21 points, and this is where like every time we lose to a ranked team, it looks like we get blown out. It looks like our defense sucks. This is not about the defense. The defense essentially gave up 14 points because their other three touchdowns started the Iowa 19, the Iowa 40, and the Iowa 27. Like, What do you expect is going to happen? Not only that, but you go back over to our chart. See how one play, zero yards, seven plays, 51, two. I mean, you get zero time for the defense to take a breath on the sideline. There's no form of sustaining at all there. And then we finally score a touchdown at the end with, with Sullivan, five plays, 75 yards. So it really just comes down to that. It comes down to the offense once again in these big games. You you cannot pin this on the defense. I thought the defense outside of those two drives where we gave up 14 plays, 88 yards, nine plays, 86. Yes, yeah, so you know you can't let that happen, but that's 14 points against a high power offense. The other points, once again, came inside the Iowa um, 40 or closer. And yeah, what do you expect? I mean, yeah, the other part of playing quarterback and again with Cade is is not turning it over, especially on the road. And I, he did a good job in the first half, which was why it was a one possession game. But he comes out and he has three turnovers in a row. And in a blink of an eye, Ohio State's, you know, essentially winning 28 to, to nothing. And it's like, yeah, you just, you, again, against these opponents that, you know, I know we didn't turn it over against Minnesota, but like against Iowa State, going back, you had a crucial turnover that flipped that game. This game, second half, not good at all. There's no way around it. And you just don't give yourself a chance in these games. And you just, you're hurting the team. But it's a combination of things, Colin. Like you said, it's not all him. Wide receivers, it didn't seem like got open very much. And again, it's hard against this team. Run game was was not successful besides one play Caleb was able to break off. Um and then just I yeah, I could argue the the coaching a little bit in this game too. Like it just you you you, you didn't capitalize in the first half, like you said, when you had the opportunities. It's only gonna be so long until Jeremiah Smith's making one handed catches, right? Yeah. That, it, it was it, it was gonna happen. It's eventually. gonna happen. And so when you when you missed out early you just, you know, maybe we were texting too. It's like, well, the om the good omen is if we have a bad first half, we're going to have a good second half, and and that was true up until this point. But but yeah, no, it it, it was just it was a tough it was a tough game to watch. It it always is against these tough teams, and I want to get to that point where we can come out and take away some some bright spots, have some good takeaways from from a game like this. But it's just hard right now. But you're exactly right, defense. They did everything they were supposed to do and more. So as we move forward now, and this is where you know we can uh, maybe next five minutes or so, and then we'll end this. Uh, we got Washington on the plate. 
And <laughs> this game is a lot tougher than maybe we thought it was going into the season because when we went into the season, we figured Washington, you know, they're brand new team. Everybody left off that national championship team, new coach, and it's going to be in Kinnick. But this is going to be a very tough game. They just beat Michigan, and you could argue that they probably should have beat Rutgers on the road last week. Yeah. Uh, you know, out-gained they missed three and, or f- yeah, outgained them yeah. by so many Shit yards. Time. Yep. It, r- they just missed just three or four convert. field goals. Yep, exactly. And um, they also played Washington State, which that game c- kind of came down to the wire as well. So this team could easily, you know, be either number one undefeated or maybe only have one loss. This is a good team and their defense is pretty good. And so this is a really, honestly, a big game for Iowa. Like I said, I think we went in this year thinking that this was going to be maybe an automatic win. And I don't yeah. think that's the case. This is a huge, huge game this upcoming Saturday. It's a big noon kickoff. It's at 11 a.m. That's the yeah. one good thing is that Washington's going to be essentially playing a 9 a.m. game. So I think that bodes well for Iowa. Yeah. Uh, Will Rogers, obviously quarterback for Washington, has looked really well. Um, looked really good in his last couple games. And and I know, like you said, they didn't beat Rutgers, but they probably should have. Um, and yeah, to get a 10-point victory at home against Michigan, I know Michigan – hasn't looked that they're like us one dimensional well yeah very one dimensional but still like to beat michigan is is a very impressive a top yeah. 10 team at the time so very impressive this game is huge game like yep. i for this season it's a must win game it's a must win game now i back to it being a must win because you know obviously right after this i mean Obviously, you got Michigan State, you got Northwestern games, which I think we should win. But if you don't win this Washington game, like, I don't know. How does the rest of the season go? Like, yeah. So it's at home. It's been a long time since we've been back at home. I'm excited to get back to home. And and I love that it's big noon kickoff. Like, I, it should be a big time matchup, big time game. Going to see Washington, which I've never seen before. Excited for that. But yeah, we, we got to find a way to win this game for sure because. The rest of the season, I mean, it could get a little hairy. Yeah. Well, what kind of scares me is the fact that Washington was able to put up 27 points against a stout Michigan defense because that's one thing Michigan yeah. has, right, is a, is a yep. really good defense. Um, so, yeah, this Washington game definitely scares me. It's a big game. Like you said, like we we need to win this game. We're one and one in conference play. We're um, three and two. So this is, this is a huge game for the Hawks. And then, yeah, you got Michigan State on the table right after that. Michigan State has a bye week this week. Uh, they just played Oregon on Friday night. So um, I think they lost like 31 to 10 against Oregon. But it doesn't get any easier. I mean, now that you get into yeah, Big Ten play, sure. every game, I mean, even Northwestern, like that can be a, a tough game, right? Wisconsin at UCLA, like some of those teams that are not very good, still going to be tough. And so we got to get back into it and, um, that Minnesota game or win looks a little bit better after seeing them beat USC there night, because not only did we beat Minnesota, we honestly, you know, Hammered 30, up, yeah. yeah, 31, 14. So yeah. that win is looking better. Uh, but we'll just have to wait and see though. So, well, that will do it for this episode. Kind of covered everything, kind of covered the tracks anyway. I'm sure we're, we were probably missing some stuff, but that's just the way it goes. We will be back. We're not going to do an episode this week covering the Washington game, but we will be back on Sunday of next week uh, following the game, hopefully with a win. Hopefully we're a little bit more positive after that game than, uh, than this week. So until then, have a good rest of your week and go Hawks.